Hey guys, so by now you may have seen my video response to Dave and his 6000 point Chaos Army painted. So uh, I thought now I might as well showcase uh, my armies, or well, my three armies. And this is going to have to be a two part of video because I have the three armies, two of them are right behind me, the other one, which is my Chaos Army. Is too big to fit on the area which I'm putting, which I put them. So, first of all, I think I'm going to show you my Space Marine army. It's the Ultramarine paint scheme, and those I can pretty much get in the same shot. So, here they are, and they are my Space Marines. One of which has fallen over. The right now, everything in this is pretty much I'm assembling this piece by piece to go in my army list. At the moment, they consist of a dreadnought. It's not ironclad. I bought an ironclad just for a different reason. And that on his arm is a twinning auto cannon that I've made out of spare parts. Looks pretty cool. And he's just that's pretty much all he is. He's just 115 points. Then we have the assault and black reach uh, commander or captain. Uh, I pretty much don't really use him. I only use him when I want to split the 10 man squad there into two 5 man squads and I want to give them both a, a sergeant you know, with a power weapon. And, and onto these guys as well. Uh, as you can see most of them are unpainted. I base coated them all in blue. These two here are painted, so is the captain. Put it this way, if there's grass on their base they are fully painted. Well, this guy doesn't have grass yet, I've still got to add that. But, uh, yeah, he did used to be a chaos, uh, att an attempted chaos conversion, but it didn't work out. That's why that bit is kind of smooth and scratched off, so. And then, of course, we have my librarian, which, believe it or not, is my first ever fine cast model. I was honestly surprised, ple well, pleasantly surprised, at how easy he was to assemble. This is... This is absolutely horrible looking face. Looks kind of like a uh, leather face to be honest with you. But um, yeah, he, he is fully painted and it's probably the, one of the best paint jobs I've done. Which is pretty cool. Anyway, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised with the uh, fighting cast. I mean, although this has already snapped off once, as you can tell by how kind of, you know, odd, an odd angle it's sticking out at. So I'm not really impressed with. Oh, sorry. Let me just sit down. I'm not really impressed with the strength of the fine cast, but painting it and gluing it together was extremely fast and simple. And then of course we have these, the sniper squad, which my friend Jason gave to me. This guy used to have. Wait, where's my finger? This guy, who's the sergeant, used to have a sniper rifle that the end snapped off, but then I realised by looking in the codex. Uh, the sergeant cannot have a sniper rifle, so I gave him a spare bolter I had lying around. And excuse me for the shaky cam work, camera work here. Yeah, and he has an ugly leather face too, but just nothing compared to how it looked when he first get, got to me. And of course, then we have my assault marines back there, in which only one of them is finished. Two are base coated. Oops, sorry. yeah, this is the finished look for them. Which is pretty good. Uh, two of them base coated, including the sergeant, which I've uh, done the power sword on, which looks pretty cool. And the power the power axe on him looks pretty cool as well. I've never tried painting them like that before, but it'll turn out pretty well. And, uh, well, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Uh, so, I think, as you can see, uh, two troops, uh, about. Uh, 200 points together. So I think it's 85 points and they are 100 and 105 I think. And then of course we have the librarian who is 130 points. The captain who is an optional who I don't really use that much. The dreadnought is 115 and those guys are about 110 I think. I'm hoping to get a devastator squad uh, and also stern guard veterans and vanguard veterans. And the Vanguard Veterans, I'm going to magnetise the backpacks on them so you can have the option of not having them with 
the jump packs. But that that's my goals with these guys anyway. Anyway, moving on to the second army and my first ever uh, 40k army. My Tyranid army. As you can see, infinitely bigger than those guys. And also infinitely more unpainted. Hang on, let me get up the, let me change the light a minute. That's better. Right, these guys all together I'd say is probably probably around twenty no twenty seven hundred points, so about two thousand seven hundred plus. And pretty much everything here is legal is legally able to use in one army. Except for a few. Uh, like the the raven the two raveners there because bear in mind this is back when they were metal and I I can't remember I think they were like 18 pound a, 18 pound a model or something which is, or 15 pound a model which is you know I'm sorry even if they're metal that is a total rip off you know and oh and you may have noticed sadly my zone trope has has fallen yeah even when we did even when I did the video animation of him, he was weak on the base then and he's finally succumbed to the heaviness of his head. But as you can see he's still smiling. I love his smile. And let's see what else we've what have we got in those. No uh, right, apart from the the Raveners, everything in here is a legal is a legal limit for one army. Right. Let's start over this side, I think, with the troops. Right, we have two troops of Termagons. There's 20, 28, uh, 28 Hormagons in each one. Then we have, I think it's 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 Gene Stealers, accompanied by a winged Broodlord with awesome, kind of Asian looking. Shoulder, sh uh, shoulder pad carapace things. You know, just grab him a minute. Now, I pretty much don't use this guy anymore. Um, this was my first ever. Well, this was one of the first ever models I ever bought, and he was my HQ at one point. Oh yeah, he has had many victories. I've even had him take the the first match I ever used him in. He actually destroyed my friend Jason's dreadnought, which is a was a big accomplish accomplishment for him. This is the gargoyle wings, but uh, I don't. I pretty much don't use him anymore. Uh, yeah, the, my first. The, he was. He was. It was him and two boxes of Termagorns for my first ever models. But anyway, yeah. So there it is. And uh, then we have my close combat uh, warrior squad. Consists of five warriors with uh, scything talons and rending claws, and nothing much else. And then my ranged warrior arm, uh, troop, which is new, actually. They, I bought them quite recently. No, 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 wait, no, wait. The, these guys are actually old, I think, because... Let me try and think now, because I, I, bu I bought the... Ass not the Assault and Black Reach. Uh, uh, I bought um, the... Uh, ba the Battle Force, that's it. I bought the Battle Force back when it had uh, uh, Khan effects in it. And it came with five warriors, I think, but I already had a box of three, and the box of three had the ranged weapons, but they were like a mismatch, and they wouldn't, and they weren't legal anymore when the new codex came out. And then, I think I had some converted then, but what the way I think it worked out was, three of these guys were the ones that were ranged, but then I converted them to melee, and then I bought another box then recently, for them. Screw it, it doesn't matter. I'm rambling. And then of course we have my very few uh, Ripper Swarms I only have because they came with the Assault and Black Reach thing and with every time you purchase a warrior box. Moving on. Now we have my fast attacks. We have my 10 Gargoyles which is the most recent purchase I made with these guys. That's why they are totally untouched and painted and whatnot. But I've used them once in a match and I gotta be fair they are probably the most surprising unit I've ever seen. Uh, you know, aside from Hormagaunts, I choose these guys as a troop. Personally, I, I'd rather have those guys as a troop choice, to be honest with you. Aside from Hormagaunts and Gene Stealers. I mean, yeah, I know you've got Warriors now, but I, I don't know, I still consider Warriors like an elite choice. You know, cause they are like the, ter the Terminators of the Terminator world. But yeah, 
against Eldar, those guys pretty much. Uh, what what was the unit? Um, I think it was Dark Reapers or something. Uh, Jason used those guys. Absolutely, they didn't destroy them, but they held them up for the entire match from the second turn. I mean, it, he was getting really annoyed with it. There's like just all this action happening in the middle, and then over to the over to the side. Then you had ten gargoyles just holding up Dark Reapers that he couldn't do anything with. It was just awesome. And then of course we have the Raveners. One of them, one of them is the first, the only painted one is my original one. And this guy I bought some time ago that I haven't finished painting. But anyway, um, then we have my two Lictors. One of them is Death Leaper, but I'd uh, proxy him as a regular Lictor now and again. Uh, and my Zone Throat. Oh, look, he's still smiling. Soldier on. And then of course we have my two Hive Guards. They are probably my most my most valued models. You know, or recent purchases. Now that's why they're both painted because <laughs> I like them so much. And then of course we have my heavy units. We have my Biovor, who is from the video, as you know. That's the video that got me popular. So this guy is the reason you guys know of me. But you might notice he has a spore mine glued to the cannon. Believe it or not, that was still glued there in the video. And if you here's a little uh, tip: if you pause the video just as he's firing it, you might actually see that thing coming out of the end of the barrel. Because that's what I did. I cut it off and blended it in the background so it was white, and then he just fires it out. So fun fact here. Then of course we have my very first and only Carnifex, who has gone through many transformations. You know, if I turn it around to so give it a better angle. He has had many transformations, believe it or not. If any of you know about the uh, conversion uh, idea for him called the uh, Death Beetle, it basically involves taking every single biomorph that is physically possible to stick on him and doing it. Spine Carapace, uh, Venom Cannon, Silent Talons, Acid Maw, Club Tail, everything. Absolutely every single one. And I print, and in the old codex rules, I'm not sure about the new one. In the old one, he came up to 297 points. <laughs> so I think you can understand why I changed to a bog standard one for a reason. <laughs> then of course we have my tri no my Morlock. I, I keep on calling him Trigon. Is my Morlock? I've had uh, sort of some success with him. First time I used him, uh, he managed to take down. I think it was some like three or four uh, Grey Knight Terminators, and then he got caught in combat with them. But I've had uh, minimal success with him. I mean, I think it's just I don't know how to use him that well, but I don't know. And now we're on to the HQs. Of course, Tyranid Prime. Every every Tyranid army needs Tyranid Prime for you know a cheap as possible HQ. I think he's something like 90 points or something. Yeah, I, he's pretty much just a warrior with horns and bigger rending claws. Exactly the same rules, only you know he's just a cheap, he's a cheap HQ option. You know, for like five hundred point or less armies. And then we have my um, what configuration is he in? Well, he's in the Swarm Lord configuration at the moment. Yep, every arm on that guy is magnetized, and those are all his options. <laughs> Of course we have the Heavy Venom Cannon, oops, zoomed out too much, Heavy Venom Cannon, this cannon which I've forgotten the name of, uh, he's got his regular Bone Sword and Lash Whip, wherever it is, and Lash Whip, and then he's got the, the, the Quad Silent Talons, and this one is the Swarm Lord configuration with the swords, uh, the, bone, the Quad Bone Swords, they're pretty cool. But uh, yeah, he's, he's one of my most recent ones as well. Oh, and I might, show, I might as well show you um, wherever he is. Um, yeah, two seconds, please. I'm just gonna put the camera down. Two seconds. Yeah. Right. I am under. I'm currently underway of creating a conversion. Of I think it was either a harpy or oh, 
Parasite of Mortrex, I think, is either one. And this is the start of it. Yeah, it's an this actually was my attempt at putting together a trigon first. It was crap. It was literally it was lying on the base like that with six silent hands. Uh this tail no, I, I don't know if the tail was that long actually, but uh, the tail kind of like that, and a weird bulbous carnifex head stuck to it. It didn't look good, and then I just bought that. But now I'm converting it into whichever one of those things I just mentioned, and this is the basic. Thing. I think it might be a parasite of Mortrex actually, because I think this was made to be a, H a possible HQ choice, and here's the head. Which to me is pretty cool. You know, I'm I'm never usually that good with green stuff, but I say that turned out really well. It's just the top of a regular trigon head. I cut it, I cut it half short, and that's gonna go. That's where it's gonna go. There, that is. The problem I'm having with this guy though is I can't decide what wings to get him. Because there's so many at Games Workshop, and I want to get the sizing right, and I also want to make it so that. Whatever style wings they are, they're not too over the top that I'm not going to be able to put them in a box or anything. But anyway, so if I put him there, where if he'll stand, no, he won't stand up. I just put him there. So, in conclusion, that's my Tyranid army, and that's my Space Marine army so far. Tell me what you think, and I'm going to turn the camera off now, clear every one of these away, so I can make room for my Chaos army, which is underneath underneath my bed taking up an entire box, an entire double case on their own. So I shall see you in a moment to me, but you shall probably see me in the next video. See ya.